Hi everyone, my name is Becky and this is a hand knit letter. A show and tell of the stuff I've made and the stuff I want to make. And I talk about them. That's the telling part. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Uh, my name is Becky. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> Let's talk about knitting. <laughs> so what am I wearing? I'm wearing a t-shirt from Walmart <laughs> and I'm wearing a knitting badge neckerchief. This is a free pattern on Ravelry maybe other places, but I found it on Ravelry by Nicholas Heed, and it's a lot of fun. And I made several of these, and I would like to make more neckerchiefs. I like wearing them. Makes me feel like I'm in a Wes Anderson film. And makes me feel jaunty. Let's move right on into stuff I made. So in stuff I made, I have one finished object. This is my Felix Cardigan by Amy Christoffers. And well, the pattern is by Amy Christoffers. It, the Felix card, this one's by me. <laughs> um, I made this out of Drops Air in the color 06, which is a charcoal gray color. And I really love it. It is simple, it's classic, it is very warm. <laughs> Just in time for spring. I put this on to try it on, and I had it on for like, um, I don't know, <laughs> a minute, <laughs> and I was already sweating. So this will have to be put away until the fall, but nevertheless, fall will come, and I will be wearing it then. Um, but my favorite part about this sweater is the buttons. I bought these buttons at Rhinebeck last year, well, at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival in Rhinebeck, New York, and they I bought them from the button lady. <laughs> I don't know her actual name, um, but she curates and sells antique buttons. And these are very old. I can't remember how old, like 200 years. <laughs> they're very old. Well, maybe not that old, but they're very old. I believe she told me 1800s, probably towards the latter end of 1800s, um, but they are, it was written on the paper, but I threw the paper out like a dummy. Anyway, um, each button is different and they've got some type of shell in them, in some of them, I think in all of them actually. So they have a little bit of sparkle in each one and I'll show you each one individually here. Hopefully it will focus. I record on an iPhone and I cannot see you or actually see me. Seeing, see me seeing you. So they are just all, where's the other one? There's two more. They are all super pretty. And then the last one. I think my favorite one is the top one because it has like almost gold flecks in it too. This could be a disaster where you can't see any of them, but if that's the case, I will put some pictures in. But I love the way it fits. I made the size three. It gave me eight inches of positive ease, and um, it's very soft, very quick and simple. Um, there was a lot going on since the last time I talked to you in my real life. <laughs> and so I um, didn't do a lot of knitting, but I managed to accomplish this because this is very fast and I love it. And it's gotta go sit in a drawer now until it cools down. Felix Cardigan, two thumbs up. Okay, so that, that is my only finished object for this episode. I have two whips and a couple of planned cast-ons. There was a crash on my porch. This one, let's see here. This one I can show you, if I can find it. Where are you? Oh, I'm so sorry. Here it is. This is my test knit for Rebecca Clo. It is a Tolsta tank, knitting a drops bell. And this is color number 13. I think it's like dark blue jeans or blue jeans on um, the wool wool warehouse website, but never, you know, 
If you know color 13, you'll know to find it. Anyway, I am test knitting the Tulsa Tank for Rebecca Clo of the Crea Bea. And I am, there are three versions in um, the tank that you get in the pattern when it, when it comes out. And I am knitting the one that's called Vest. And basically it's just a scoop neck, um, simple, plain sleeveless tank, just like a classic version of a tank. Um, I really am excited about it because it has wider straps. I believe all three have wider straps, well, at least wide enough that you can, your bra strap can be under it and you won't have it just constantly coming out or peeking out the side. And you'll feel more put together that way. At least I feel more put together when my bra strap is not always trying to... <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, so I'm knitting the vest version and I'm knitting the D cup, um, bust adjustment it has no bust adjustment, a B cup bust adjustment, a D and an F. And so I'm knitting the D cup bust adjustment on the vest version and I'm loving it so far. I don't have that much. I'm not really, you know, into it. Whoa. Oh, calm down. <laughs> um, I'm not really that far into it, but it's knitting up very quickly. I cast this on yesterday. And so it's moving along fast because it's on, well, my gate, on my gauge, I'm knitting it on a size eight needle to meet the gauge of the pattern. And um, what else can I say about this? I really love the drop spell. I have never knit with drop spell before, but I've have knit with Santa's garn Lena um, a couple times, and I will say it's comparable to San Santa's garn Lena in my opinion. I don't think there's any. Is there any um, linen content in this? I don't think so. Yes, yeah, there is. There is. There's a 53% cotton, 33% viscose, 14% linen. So I would put it in the same cat category as um, Santa's garn Lena. Um, I like the feel of this better already and I like knitting with it better and it I believe is less expensive at least it was for me it's on sale right now on Will Warehouse and um, I think I paid I don't know it was like a pound 40 I don't know what that is in dollars but shipped to me from Will Warehouse and I bought more than I needed um, I think this cost me $32. So that's, that's really good. Cause I had paid for quite a bit in the shipping. I have some, I have a dog wanting to come in. I will have extra of this yarn. So maybe I can make another version of the Tulsa tank, um, with some stripes. And that's what I probably will do with the leftover blue yarn that I have. So the last episode I talked to you about how I was taking inspiration for my color palette from the paintings of Van Gogh, which I know sounds very, <laughs> it sounds like I think I'm smart or something, <laughs> but I just don't know how to pick colors and he knows how to pick colors or he knew how to pick colors and I like the colors he picked. So the reason I chose this color was um, Iris's 1889. So I think that looks like it goes together and yeah, Iris's 1889 Tulsi Tank. And check out this cool bag. <laughs> My husband got this free from that, um, from a woodworking convention or a building convention that he went to. And I thought that is a good project bag. I'm going to take that from you. So the next thing and stuff I'm making is a test knit and it was also a test knit, but it is something that I can't show you right now. But I, but I can tell you that it's an accessory and, um, I can show you the, the yarn. So I ordered this from Sarah of Craft Me Not Yarn Co. And this is her Silky Sport base and it feels super, super good. And I wound it like a monkey. <laughs> um, but I really do love how how this yarn feels. I'm, I'm gonna definitely order more for other accessories and um, that's all I can really say about that. It's a quick knit, it's fun, and I'm gonna like wearing it. Anyhow, the inspiration for this one is 
Madame Genou. So kind of looks like it, right? But Sarah calls this lilac for some reason. She doesn't call it Madame Genou. I don't know why. She's a weirdo. <laughs> okay, we're all ready to stuff I wanna make. This is going by quick. I hope that you like that. <laughs> and if you don't like that, please don't tell me. So in Stuff I Wanna Make, I have my eye on the Rhoda Tank by Irene Lynn. And I ordered some yarn for it and it is just the coolest color. <laughs> so this is from Newberg Yarn Co. Right? Yeah. Newberg Yarn Co. And the dyer is Kim. And she dyed up this gorgeous green called the Emerald Killer. And um, what's cool about this is this is in her like Victorian um, colors collection. And apparently this was a color that was hard to come by, but sought after in the Victorian era. And the only way to make this was with um, something scary. <laughs> I, I can't remember. I don't know if it was mercury or something or something that off gassed in the rooms, like where they paint their rooms with it and um, whatever chemical that was or whatever com uh, compound that was would off gas and it would, you know, <laughs> people, <laughs> people would be dead. <laughs> anyway, which is very sad, you know, because those were real people, but um, it is a very cool color. So I'm going to make that out of um, Newberg Yarn Co. And this one, this color that goes, with, the painting that goes with this one is, um, a lot of fun. <laughs> so this one is the potato eaters. And I'm cracking myself up because I imagine putting a Ravelry um, page for this project up and calling this my potato eater <laughs> tank, which I will do. And people will be like, what is her, <laughs> what is her brain doing? <laughs> Why is that the potato eater tank? And we'll know. Lastly, on this episode and stuff I want to make is um, a chunky summer tank. You heard me right. <laughs> you would think that those words do not and should not go together, but I'm putting them together. And I might be sad, and I might regret it, or I might love it. We'll see. Hold your horses. <laughs> anyway, I am making a tank top to go along with um, this masterpiece, this literary classic that is Knit One Kill Two. <laughs> um, there is a tank in the back called uh, Lamb Spun's Who Done It Shell, and it, it looks like that. There's not a lot of guidance for this tank as far as ha like, I don't know. It just doesn't look like something I'm, I really want to knit. Um, so I'm going to knit one of the Loopy Mango patterns. She has a lot of um, chunky summer knit patterns. Um, I'm gonna either knit um, one of two, I'll put them on the screen. And I'm going to use this beautiful color. It is um, Iris. Did I tell you that the, um, did I tell you that the Craft Me Not one was lilac? It's lilac if I didn't tell you that, that's the color. Um, this is Iris and this is Taki Yarns Hatteras. It is 100% cotton, it is chunky, it is chonky. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna knit one of those out of this. We'll see how that goes. That's gonna be fun or incredibly sweaty. And I am using this page as my painting this is Cafe Terrace at night with my Iris chonky yarn. So yeah, we still have the knit one, kill two, read along, knit along, bake along going on right now on Ravelry and on Instagram. Um, you can find the group in my Ravelry group or the I guess it's like a separate thread, but the discussion board, you'll see a thread for the Knit One Kill Two read along. And um, it's in a hand knit letter Ravelry group. You can go there and join and 
uh, read all the hilarity that's going on there. You all are super funny. You're cracking me up. I'm having the best time uh, hearing what you think about this book. And um, also, if you don't do Ravelry or if you don't really like Ravelry or the discussion thread, because it's a little different using it, um, I have an Instagram Instagram. I have an Instagram uh, private group and you can DM me if you'd like to join that and I'll put you in there. Um, I finished this. It was so silly. <laughs> so I laughed out loud so many times, uh, which I don't think was the author's intention, but it made me laugh. It made me happy. There's not hardly any substance, but it was exactly what I needed in the moment. <laughs> and so I thoroughly enjoyed myself with this read. And I thank Miss Maggie Sefton for writing this because it made me so, uh, this is a bookmark. Did you know that uh, that could be a bookmark? Anything can really be a bookmark, but you, you may not want to put it in your book. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've, I've had the best time. I have read the whole thing. So now I'm working on casting on that top and I'm gonna be baking the cinnamon rolls and sharing what I think about that recipe. The recipe for the cinnamon rolls is in this book. Um, if you are using an audio book to read along with us and you would like the copy, would you like a copy of the cinnamon roll recipe? Um, you can email me at ahandknitletter at gmail.com and I will send you the recipe. So yeah. We're having a fantastic time. So in each of my podcasts, I like to shout out or uh, let you know about some other podcasts that I enjoy watching that I think that you might enjoy watching as well. I love knitting podcasts, one of my favorite things to watch. So I'm always looking for um, a new podcast or um, it might not be new, but new to me. So I like to share that with you as well. So my first one is gonna be Knee Knits, which is N-E Knits. And her name is Amy, and I really love her channel. Um, you probably do know, know about her. Um, she's uh, a, a larger channel, um, but I really love the content that she puts out. She's very thorough. I learn something from her every time about either, either about yarn or patterns or um, the construction of certain patterns that I'm interested in. She just recently put out a video that I watched yesterday, and it was um, a comprehensive look at the Knitting for Olive knitting book, which I really appreciated. She went through all the patterns that can be found in it and um, uh, also kind of weighed the value of the book uh, as opposed to the value of purchasing pat standalone patterns. And um, she even mentioned how you can purchase the standalone patterns on Ravelry or on the Knitting for Olive website, and there is a price difference. Uh, I believe the Knitting for Olive website is cheaper, so that might be something that you might want to look into as well. I know that we're all, you know, we all are trying to make it <laughs> financially, so <laughs> it's nice to have, um, to get things at a, at a better cost for, for us. The other channel that I want to mention is uh, Knit Weekend, which is Haley. Um, I'm, I got to meet Haley in person when I went up to uh, the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. She has a wonderful channel. Um, I never miss an episode and I think that once you start watching her that you will also do the same. <laughs> so check out Haley and hello Haley if you're watching. Um, yeah, so those are my two podcasts for the week. I hope that you check them out and that you enjoy them. And let's see, my garden is going really good. I've been putting a lot of work into that lately and I kind of need to buckle down because I need to get things planted. But my indigo is looking so good. Um, one of the harder parts on the indigo is germination. And so I, I planted a lot. I, I started a lot of seeds when I first planted it, but I do have, can report that I have 25 beautiful plants <laughs> to show for it. And um, I can't wait to put those in. I am so tempted to pinch off a little leaf and crush it between my fingers and see what that looks like. But they are so pretty that I don't want to do that right now either. And, but they're tiny, they're babies, and baby's first haircut can't happen right now. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. Um, also, when I was weeding my garden, I saw 
in the corner of, of I have a fenced in cottage garden and then I have a back garden, but in my cottage garden on the corner fence post, something had sprouted there. And I thought it was the plant I thought it was. And then um, my daughter-in-law Maddie um, took a picture off their phone and she did stuff that young people can do. <laughs> and she found it on the internet. And um, it's, it is what I thought it was, it's pokeweed. You remember last episode when I said I wanted to gather poke berries and um, and dye fabrics and yarns with the pokeweed? Um, I'm so excited because I mean I know it grows all along behind my house, and so it's not like it's it's not like it's like a magical thing that it happened right there in the garden, but it's almost like it heard me. So <laughs> you know sometimes when you're when you talk about things and then you open up your phone and and you have all these targeted ads and you know that the phone is listening to you, <laughs> it was like the garden was listening to me. So I was very excited to see that. I'm gonna let it grow there and know it's a weed. I know it's a noxious weed to some people. I also know that it is a poisonous weed. I made a joke last time that I haven't tried eating it yet. I promise I won't eat it. <laughs> but um, I do know that. I know that it's poisonous and, and all that. I don't have any little people that are gonna eat that um, in my life. And um, yeah, so I'm excited about it. I think it's gonna be fun. I'm just gonna let it grow there. Normally I would pull stuff like that out, but I just kind of feel like this year you get to stay. <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm going to do some garden tours and, um, updates in the future. If that's something that you're interested, interested in, I know that not everybody is, so I'll put it at the end of uh, my videos when I do so, uh, coming up because it's, it's, it's getting to be gardening, gardening season and I'm super happy. I love it. It's one of my favorite things in my life is being a gardener. So Happy to share it with a few of you that might be here for that, but mostly this is gonna be knitting and crafts. And I, oh, also next month is May. News flash, <laughs> this just in, next month's May. <laughs> but um, there's like a me made May thing that goes along, goes around on social media where you kind of show your handmade uh, outfits, uh, pieces in your wardrobe that you've made yourself. Um, so I am, gonna try my best to participate in that. I'm gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to cut out a couple skirts, a dress hopefully, uh, maybe some pants and sew those up and I'm gonna be knitting all sorts of tanks. So it's gonna be fun. So stick around. Anyway, um, I th yeah, that's it. That's all she showed and all she told. So until next time, I hope you take care. I wish you well. Happy knitting.